Redstone is hard. It's actually really hard. Uh, it's it's a lot harder than I thought it was. So cutest to all the people who actually work out how to do these things, and uh, and you know don't muck up as much as I did. So I'm gonna just gonna take you through uh, what I ended up completing, as opposed to the, the very painful process of doing it. I did record that, but then. And nobody needs to see those mistakes. Just just feel comfortable that not all YouTubers can do redstone. So, we have two farms built up at the moment. The first one is a just a little passive sugarcane farm. So the theory here is that this sugarcane can still get light because it's surrounded by glass. The torches are shining through and making the sugarcane grow. There's these little pistons and then every time they grow up to the observer height, then the redstone behind it is triggered. It will trigger off a pulse. Uh, so we've got this just a, a, a line of redstone dust as well as the observers here. They'll see the new change and then they'll pulse out. They'll break the sugar cane. And then beneath we have this little minecart that's going back and forth. This all needs to be powered rails, by the way, for it to actually collect things. I learned this the hard way. You cannot use just standard rails here. Uh, or at least that's been my experience. That just goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and collects everything. Uh, now it drops it into this hopper here and there's some things that I don't understand here that will force the cart to stop there if it was full. Um, but suffice to say that's a comparator with a torch here and then a repeater and the blocks in this formation and it works. Don't ask me why it works, it, it just works people. Uh, and then there's a couple of hoppers in here that uh, are connected to this chest and then connecting to this chest and we get s slowly accumulate sugarcane. Now there's not that much of it is the problem at the moment so I was kind of hoping that it would be collecting a little bit faster but fortunately I left myself room so I can grow at least another row here um, and just double my production pretty easily. And if it turns out that's not enough as well, then I might do something to fix that up and make it grow, you know, make it expand out slightly. I do have to cover it all up in buildings is the only thing that I'm aware of. Um, and I'm not going to be using sugarcane all that often until I actually hit villager trading. So uh, at the moment, it's just accumulating, which is good. Now, the next one that I've done is a pumpkin farm. And you can see this building here is been built just to cover it up it doesn't have a roof yet and uh to be honest i'm not finished with it i'm not happy with the finished product it's just very temporary and it's covered it up but in here we have a little pumpkin farm uh in that we have all these all these observers they're all observing downwards and then there's piston blocks that are all pointing downwards and that's redstone dust on over the entire thing now what happens is that these, these observe, oh, and it's broken. This is probably why you shouldn't take redstone lessons from me. Anyway, when it's working, that happens. So what just happened is that a pumpkin, one of these stems changed, ah, oh, oh, we've got fandoms. That's a, that's a bad, that's a bad sign. Uh, Oh, oh. Go away. Mean. Alright, we're, we're just going to find a, a bed quickly. And get rid of these guys. Because, you know, I'm in the middle of explaining something. And we don't need to be interrupted. Okay. The, uh, I've slept. The phantoms will disappear. They'll start burning up in the daylight. And we can continue on. I'm trying to explain redstone. Go away. Anyway. Uh, so what's happening here is that the pumpkin grows. And it will expand to one of these slots by it. And then because that actually ch triggers a change in the stem. The observer sees that. It pulses out redstone. All the pistons pr uh, push down. So no ma matter where it's grown to. It will break it with the piston. And then, yeah, we pick up a pumpkin. Now, underneath it is just a minecart hopper collection system 
Although it seems to have stopped, and it's stopped in a really inconvenient location. Uh, so we're just gonna dig our way over, so we can we can restart that one. Uh, as far as I'm, I'm aware, it shouldn't stop. So if anyone knows why this is happening, because it, it it's not the first time this has happened. I thought it was just a glitch at the start, uh, but apparently not. Um, so we're just going to dig a little maintenance tunnel and hope, hope that it doesn't do this all the time. Oh, you had to, you had to stay there, didn't you? Really? You're going to make me break this one? There we go. All right. So we put that, uh, put our powered rail back on. Okay. That's all fine. Now I just need a... I uh, just need a crafting table. Here we are. Put our minecart back together. Go back over. And we just go like that. Nope. Like that. There we go. And so he's going to travel along down the bottom here and pick up all the pumpkins. And when it hits that block, it should go backwards. If I right click, it's picked up the pumpkins, as you can see. It's staying up here, and this is where our little comparator system is working. And it should launch it back off. Should. Should launch it. You know, these things work, and then you show it on camera, and then it does then, then it doesn't, right? So, what, we've got a comparator here. Yeah. We've got a repeater here. Let's let's try you again, right? So we're gonna fill you up with pumpkins. No, don't come in here, village idiot. I feel ah, I'm missing a block. There we go. Yes. Yes, need to get the blocks right. And then off it goes. So that'll slowly fill up this chest with pumpkins as well. Now, I, th I think that the, the main reason why it's stalled is basically that it, this cart hasn't been running and possibly the pumpkins have been spawning. I, I don't know, but um, I'm not too worried about this. This is function. Uh, either way, that'll come in handy for trading later on. Now, to stop those villagers just getting stuck in there as well, I might just do that and then just block it up for the time being. Okay, so we have basic, basic production. Oh, actually, the third thing that I've made is a little sheep farm. So again, we've just got a, a, a sheep in the middle here. Uh, they eat grass, of course, so they, eat, they nom 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 on the grass and it changes the grass estate. Underneath the dispenser here that's full of shears, we have an observer. So when the observer notices the change on the grass, then it will pulse this redstone here and that will uh, cause the dispenser to dispense on the sheep, which collects wool and then we have wool here and we have wool here. So oh, it goes into a little hopper minecart, that will get down at the bottom, and then that goes into an, a hopper that will connect to the chest. If you just do it with a, uh, a, uh, uh, a hopper, it won't collect, so you do need the minecart in there. Uh, I'm presuming just to raise it up high enough to transfer through the block, I'm not sure the exact reason why, but it, it does work. Uh, yeah, we have had many wool uh, many wool uh, from this system and it's a little bit ugly because I ran out of glass and I need to keep my sheep in there uh, so realistically I do want that to be entirely glass and this is really nicely tileable so I could have made it more compact by putting it here and then put another one here and so on and so forth but again two sheep is actually meeting my needs pretty well so far I haven't had a huge need for wool although I have had some which leads me to the next thing that I'm going to show you Yes, we have multiple things, and you might have just spotted it in the background. Look, we have a windmill. Hey. 
So, let's go check it out. This I built entirely off camera. There's no footage of doing it. It was late at night and I didn't want to wake up my partner by recording and the sound of my voice as I was explaining how, how much of a pain this really was. It really was a huge pain. Do yourself a favor, just don't be able to windmills. Windmills are horrible, they're awful, just just don't. So the base of it was pretty simple, right? All it is is just stone and it's slightly different. We've got the, uh, we've got deep slate as the base here for a start. Uh, but then I've actually varied up the material all the way up as opposed to just the, the straight gradient that we've done elsewhere. And I kind of like the result. Uh, I've also put in a few different blocks up the top there as well. And uh, it looks a bit, you know, patchy, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, with the way that that's turned out. So and then we've just got a few little bits and pieces hanging off for detailing, some trap doors just to to give us a, a little bit of break up in the structure. And if we go around the back here, then you can see the same sort of thing I've done on the second level. Not so much this level. I'm not sure that it really needed it. Um, and then we've got some vines crawling up this side here. And I'm just letting that slowly grow up. That'll probably go around the corner as well. Uh, and maybe we could get some, some cool diagonal sort of thing happening here as well. Now you might have noticed some moss blocks here as well. That's actually from tearing down this villager thing here. And I'll show you, I'll talk through this other part. I don't think I've forgotten it. Uh, I just want to show off the windmill first. Uh, then inside we've got, you know, kind of the grindstone. Uh, I think I think I want to put stairs in here. I really limited myself to space here. It should have been a bit wider. So in hindsight, I would have made this this path be a little bit further further this way uh, but that's okay uh, that's okay we can deal with that and then inside if we go up we've got the like the drive mechanism to turn the the grindstone then we've got the actual the actual wheel uh, it is in the correct place and I put a little bed down here and you know um, see if a villager would actually climb up the ladder to go to bed I haven't actually come up here to check and then finally we've got a thatched roof now the roof isn't finished yep there's, I'm, 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 I'm still being a green and not finishing things. I'm, I'm so sorry for everyone. Um, I will get to it, I promise. And then we've got a little, kind of a little, you know, attic kind of area. And then I've uh, harvested up a heap of hay. Now the reason why I hadn't actually finished this yet is I ran out of hay and I need to wait some more for to grow so we can see it's you know it's aging down there I think it's about ready to harvest so I'll jump down there soon get some more and we can finish off the thatching so it won't take long at all now going back down uh, you also notice that I, I varied up the it to wood at the top I kind of feel like I wanted a, a break from just solid stone buildings and start making that a little bit more separate and then I spent many many times many trips coming back here just to observe the sails so these are these are actually uh, spruce stairs you can see if we go this side uh, and so I made that you can see the little gaps which I was kind of happy with because it felt like the the sails were catching off you know uh, not quite properly connected and the winds escaping slightly through and I kept on coming back here and then I worked out, okay, I need to make it thicker. And then I realized the stairs were not put on right. They weren't uniform. They, it didn't look like it was all pointing the right way, like it's going to be spinning uniformly. Um, and then I thought, oh, let's mix it up, mix it up with some diorite and actually make that block useful as opposed to just plain ugly. Um, and so, yeah, there was a lot of dirt scaffolding happening uh, to make this happen. But in the end, uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with the results. I mean, look at this. Look at this. It's starting to come together. Things are looking more like a town, which is great because before, you know, it was it was a basic village, uh, and we've expanded this out, and it's starting to look starting to look more like the sort of finished product. I mean, it's nowhere near complete, but it, we're starting to get there, and uh, that's why I did stop progress on the wall. That has not changed whatsoever. So, you know, don't don't be surprised slash disappointed that it's still the basic wall over there. Um, but that will change, of course. But I was getting bored with the wall. Let's let's be honest. I was bored. 
I wanted to do something else, mix it up. I've got to keep it myself entertained here as well. And I do this for my own entertainment, really. I've got no viewers at the moment, so really, for me to keep motivation, it's it's really got to be about me, guys. Anyway, now, the second thing you will have noticed here is, well, one, I'm standing on this big, giant plant arch. So this is going to be a little archway, and I'm going to put a little sign sort of thing coming out here. And it's going to be an inn, so I'm going to put a stables here and a big inn here. So it's going to be the village inn where people come in, they, they tether up the horses. I'll have to go out and catch some horses as well. Uh, tether the horses here. And then um, they, they go in and they enjoy a mug of ale or orange juice for your kids. Yeah, it's it's just orange juice. There's there's no alcohol in this series whatsoever. Um, but then we have a, gar uh, a market here as well. So I want to fill these up with something. I mean, I tried putting ice in here, but it melted. I had the wrong kind of ice. I want to put things in here to um, make it f feel like it's full of something that's being sold. I don't want to just put compost bins because, yeah, it doesn't look the same and my villagers are all determined farmers and I don't want that happening. So uh, then I've got some item frames to put some items in, although I have noticed they kind of launch themselves off the the uh, supports here. So not not a huge fan. I may, I may end up moving that to, to be something more like this. Yeah. Uh, so we've got space for our villagers to, you know, have a little market in here. Just going to put a torch in case it spawns something on this spot here. Anyway, um, and so I'll, I'll mix these up and put these back into position. We'll put it there maybe, and we've got already those. Yeah, so that's looking a lot better by itself. And uh, there's a few over here that I need to fix up. But anyway, uh, continue the tour. So we've got a little corner one, corner stall. You know, prime real estate, some flower beds in the middle. I want to get different flowers, but that's what I had at the time being. I want to get the, the roses or something a little bit bushier, if possible. Um, and yeah, then this corner little thing here. And then I, of course, turned some flowers into dye so I could get different colored wool. So I have made good use of my wool collection so far up here, as well as on top of the, the market stalls here. And then what I did with the market stalls, of course, is just go across the top of them and put string. And what that will do, I think, if I if I understand correctly, uh, that will stop mobs from spawning on top of the wall. And that means I just won't have a creeper drop down on me out of nowhere or a zombie or something like that. And it really does help keep the, keep the place nice and safe uh, and free of monsters. Because uh, one of the other things I did have uh, during construction, you know, trying to build a windmill in a market, and then I had a heap of zombies pour off that roof. So I've gone up there and strung the, cop of, the top of the copper roof as well, which, as you can see, uh, you might not be able to see from this distance, but it's starting to oxidize as well. So I'm going to need to do something about that too. Uh, now, the final thing I've got to show you guys today, and I realize that this may be... A fairly short episode, but that's fine. I'm showing a progress here. Um, I'm not really showing how many, uh, many how tos. Uh, I'll try and put in some actual recording. Uh, actually, I know. I'll make you a deal. I'll show you recording building up this section here as well. So we can show a recording of some of the work putting into the inn and building up this little section here. Now what this is, all this dirt is layouts. So I'm laying out now where I want to put my town uh, in terms of where I'm going to build up different buildings. So rather than just approach everything at its ad hoc at the moment, which which to be honest, it, it, it has been very much like that. Uh, I'm instead, I'm going to put a house here. I'm going to put another house here that's going to be double storied. Uh, I might want a symbol for that. Yeah, we'll just say look, the big tall thing means double storied. Uh, and then that'll have a, like a little back garden, like a little rose garden, because they're richer folks. Uh, whereas these two will be single stories. And that will give me some levels to this as well, uh, which I will desperately need here just to break things up and to make things, uh, make it look interesting and have different uh, kind of points in place. And I want to put the roofs at different levels too. 
I mean, this one being slightly higher than this one maybe, or it might go around the other way around, because if you're coming in, you can uh, see different things this way. Anyway, not important now. And so we've got another one sitting over here. I'm thinking of just leaving this into some kind of alley, um, and you know, maybe put a cart or something here. Um, something to, to fill up just this kind of space. I don't want it to, I, I like this little corner bit here. I'd, li I'd like like a little alley alleyway that goes in here. And then, so we're gonna have a house here, then we're just playing with those levels again and just pushing this one further out. And I'm thinking this might be another of the fancy ones with the side, the side garden here as well, um, where we've got that little cobblestone uh, fence in place. And then here, I'm thinking I want to move this in so maybe it can be some stairwells at the wall. Uh, if I then wall this in with a building and just do an extra thick part here, we can we can make that into a stairwell so it's a place to get up on the wall. Because at the moment, you have to go down there and or through the turret, which is a bit of a, a walk if you do want to get up there. And then we can have another access point around the corner here. Um, and yeah, that's as far as I've gotten planning things out. So I've just been using dirt blocks because I've got plenty of it and I can destroy it fairly easily. Um, and yeah, so where things are happening, good things are happening. Um, we have cows running around the place. I released them all because my uh, they was kept on getting iron golems stop, stuck in there. So uh, I'll need to find a place to set up a cow, cow farm. And I've also realized that my villagers my village has escaped into the Carabas, and I'm I'm not sure they're coming back. Village villages are nothing but trouble, really. So what that will do, though, between the inn and between these buildings here, that should expand with the additional beds I'll be putting in it. My available spots for villages, and so one of the things I think that's crucial about this build or this little plan town is to have movement in it. So if you don't have any movement in Minecraft, then you're the only thing moving really. You or mobs are, don't mind the, the massive trees here. Uh, there is a plan for them. It involves an ax. Uh, yeah, um, you, uh, I've just lost all my green credentials. But that's my wood supply. Uh, this, this build takes up a lot of wood and I'm gonna need more before the end is done. So, I've just planted outside rather than inside all the time now. Oh, nearly, nearly walked off to my zombified death. Um, just so I can, I, I have it on hand and I don't need to uh, keep cluttering up because the, these spots are going to be filling up with things, filling up with buildings, and so I kind of really afford to have it, to have it here all the time, uh, or to around the corner there, which I think there might be, might be one still there. Yeah, we've got a spruce tree still. So that'll, that'll get chopped down. I'll probably mow up the leaves for materials as well. And then we still have the original uh, original market bit here as well, uh, which is nice. The villagers haven't, ha haven't lost their original market. And that actually provided a neat little template to start building up these ones as well. Although obviously I decided to take more of a tenty look to it as well. I, I'm still not finished with the detailing here. I think I can still contribute or still continue to uh, to put details on that. And I'm just going to show you what I mean here as well. So grab, grab a few bits and pieces and just put these in. And we're going to turn these into buttons. Uh, and I've got some birch ones already. So where we've got the, the spruce things happening, just to put, you know, how are these all actually pegged on? You know, how are they still standing there? You've got to think about these sort of things. So where we, we put those little buttons there, they're not actually buttons, of course, they just look like them. And then that can show, ah, oh, there's, there's some kind of frame in here that's actually holding everything up and holding it all together. So it's all about the illusion rather than any practical point uh, or practical need. But if you just add a few little bits and detail, uh, bits and pieces here and there, 
then you start looking at a more complete build. It breaks it up. It, it doesn't look so much like it's a really sort of basic thing that's happening. And then we've got these these ones here, which of course are the basic ones. But what we will also be doing here, uh, which I haven't uh, put in yet, is I want to do some kind of well or some kind of water feature. Oh, maybe that's a, that could be a happy accident right there. Uh, no, no, so I haven't gotten that right. We want to do the here, then that. There we go. So maybe like a uh, some kind of thing that's shaped like this, maybe. If we can get some kind of fountaining effect, oh, I have no idea how you might be able to do that. Um, but yeah, basically have have a central central well or fountainy thing in the middle here, um, so that we have this as a bit of a more, I guess, featured location because now we have the the village market over here. Then this this spot isn't so required now. Um, yeah, it's it's not so quite required now. So we want to we want to keep keep a, a point and a purpose to each of our things. Now I am thinking of keeping the blacksmith here as well, but this guy is going to get an upgrade. I mean, at the moment he's working with lava, so that that by itself is kind of impressive. You're an impressive man. Hmm. Yeah, he just nodded. What's up? Uh, but ultimately, I want to make him even better. And so I'm going to tear down his blacksmithery. And we're going to make it into an even bigger and uh, bigger sort of forge. We're going to do some upgrades. We're going to put some blast furnaces in. We'll put some other uh, bits and pieces. So at the moment, we've just got a toolsmith, I think it is. Yeah, weaponsmith. So he'll go from, yep, a weaponsmith. But we'll also have a toolsmith in here and uh, some other villages just to keep our, our an armorer i think is the other one that i need uh just so we've got a full range of professions all sitting around and then um yeah so there'll be a place to tie up your horse so it can get shooed or shod shod shooed shod yeah it's shod uh and just make a more of a complete blacksmith oh yeah and put in some anvils you know you're a weaponsmith and you're using a grindstone that you don't have an anvil. You're sounding more like an amateur to me now. Oh look, you're a novice. Right. That was a bad joke. Um, then we have the mage tower that has yet to come in here as well. Now I'm going to be using some special blocks for that and hopefully people can guess what that will be. But in case you don't, I'm not going to spoil it just now. Uh, down by the the lake here, we're going to turn this into uh, fisherman's hut. So we want some nets and things like that. Um, and we'll make a little pier. We'll put some boats in there. Uh, so this pier will, will probably get a bit of an upgrade too. Um, and so we'll make it like a little slum slash fishery area around this area. Maybe a warehouse or something. Uh, maybe even a boat. Maybe even a boat under construction or something. So we, we could put that in here. So it's like a dry dock or something for the fishery that go and they go out on the lake and uh, they fish the fish in the lake. Then obviously we're going to build something around the sugar farm uh, to just cover it up and you know to get rid of this sort of thing here. We need to improve on our pumpkin, which just which just triggered. I could hear it. You can hear those pistons go. And put a shed around our sheep as well. Uh, and then obviously we have the main castle to be completed up here. But I'm also thinking, because I'm probably going to be tearing down their chapel over here, is that I'll put them, give them a, 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 a nice little chapel. A nice little chapel right next to the really noise, noisy uh, redstone up here, just below, uh, just below the uh, the the castle. Then over this area, we've still got some building up to do as well. I mean, I think it is reserved as the farming area, uh, but maybe we'll put in a pigsty. Uh, we we need to think and work on 
what's the, what's the per point and purpose of this area? What are we putting it? Why is there a cow on the wall? We have cows manning the walls. And uh, what are we going to put in these areas? There's there's all decisions. Now, I could just put in more housing. So there's plenty of room for housing in this build because, as I said, I want to keep villages. I want to have some life behind this build. Uh, and villagers wandering around doing a thing is the easiest way to do that. Uh, now, the final thing that I haven't mentioned as well is I do need a village, villager trading hole for myself. Um, so I can trade and get things from them and that can be used to help me build things and uh, get enough gear to eventually eventually uh, go to the end, kill the ender dragon and get an elytra. Um, the, these would be nice things to have and just make life so much easier. I mean, the amount of times that where I've wanted to, to just kind of rock it up there and to the windmill and fix things, it would it would just make life so much easier. All these villagers just nodding at amazing, really appropriate times. It's, it's, it's amazing. And finally, we need to do something with our mine. At the moment, it's just a drop down to a strip mine. So we're going to do something with this crevasse. It's, it's here. I feel like we should. Um, and then you will have also noticed in my hand before, or maybe you didn't, uh, we had moss. So what I'm going to do here, yeah, I'm just going to go show you. Let's bounce over here. Is where I have my portal. Behind this, really, you can't. There we are. Is that's where we're going to build our portal. So we're going to build a little room back down here. So it's going to be like a, a magical cave where the the portal is, and then there's going to be all these these trees and um, like natural light sources and glow berries to make sure that mobs don't spawn, but also to build it into like there's there's some kind of reason why the uh, the town was founded here around this you know mystical portal sort of thing, and that's going to turn out to be our little cave area. Um, now I just want to put a lantern in here to light it up. But essentially what will happen with moss blocks is that when you put them in and then you bone mill them, and fortunately I've got a little bit here, I don't have a lot, but uh, when you do this then you get, not only do you get more moss blocks, but it turns everything around it into this kind of really cool magical space. So that as you bone mill it, we've got azalea trees, and we've got, um, you know, obviously more moss. We've got grass growing, which may not stay there. Um, but it makes it into this really kind of pretty sort of area here. And I feel like that's going to work really well with the portal embedded in this big cave sort of area uh, at the back there. So that's, that's our plan for our... For our uh, section here, we're going to pick up these moss carpets as well. I mean, and then we can start laying that in over here. And that'll be our nether portal uh, area. So rather than just having this thing stuck in the wall in the corner at the moment. Goodbye, cow. And then instead, we're going to have this magical little portal room, which which I like the idea of. I was thinking of putting in the in the wizard cave, but I don't want things coming through and eating my wizards. So, yeah. I'm not sure if that would ever be a thing, but you never know. Uh, you never know when someone will come along and eat your wizards. So, um, without further ado, I've just realised I say so a lot. So, I'm sorry about saying so. So, if I can help that, or so if you can give me, you know, some help to address my so, then 
So that'd be like really good. But without further ado, let's jump in and let's get this section of the, the build uh, underway. Uh, I wanted to say complete, but to be honest, it's probably not going to be complete. So let's, oh, there's that word again. Let's go. Okay, so the first section of that super fast build mode has been done, and here's our first house. So I've gone to the nether and I picked up those uh, the crimson planks. So uh, from the nether, from the trees there, just because I want a different color of roofs. I don't want to always go with copper. I don't want to always go with the uh, the wooden effect or a thatched effect. I want to be able to mix it up and use different colors throughout my builds. Hello, zombie. How you doing there? You got a bow. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, now, you would have noticed that I, I destroyed quite a few things when I was building this as well. So the reason for that is you build something and you look at it and it's, you know, it's not quite right or you have an idea. And so you shouldn't be afraid to just kind of knock things down and try again and just put in th places. The other idea I actually had about this roof was actually to make it out of deep slate. Uh, so that was a consideration as well. I think I like the red. I think I like the, well, the purpley uh, color here. And then I'm obviously using the crimson for this one as well. I think I'll give this one a little bit of a slate door. Uh, sorry, a slate door. <sighs> a slate roof uh, to finish off the roof for this one. And then maybe we'll do something different for this one here. Just to keep it, you know, mixed up and having different effects uh, throughout the build. Now, I may have to remove this window here. In hindsight, this, this build is probably going to take us up to there. Then it'll have a roof. So this this window will be looking onto a roof, and that's that's not really what you'd what you'd actually do if you're building this house. So we'll we'll change that up. I'm also thinking that dark oak doors for this one, right? This this looks a little bit too military. So these doors belong over there, and I need some dark oak, which I have gone and planted uh, way over there. I'm still yet to see any of it uh, actually turn into a tree. So, but we do have some saplings, so I hope that they'll grow up soon so we can harvest them and get even more saplings. There's only two down there. Oh, hi, spider. And that way we'll be able to have our, our proper finished uh, doors here. Now, I have used trap doors instead of blocks here. I think that just makes for a nice effect as if they've got larger sort of doors and panelling here. Now, if we go inside... We have polished deep slate tiles or slabs down the bottom here. So there's still some interior decorating to be done here. We need to do something with a staircase here to, to mix it up. We need to put some, some little bits and pieces in here just to make it uh, appropriate. We need a door at the back as well. And uh, actually, let's, let's just see how it goes with a, a nice little oak door. Yeah, and this needs to be deep slate tile as well. I've just, you know, we wouldn't have grass inside. So we'll fix that up shortly as well. Going upstairs, we've just got a, a little lantern up here just to keep things lit up. And you will have noticed in the in in the super fast build mode, I went around and stole my villagers' doors. Yeah, I'm a I'm a bad person. Oh, that's 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 an extreme close up. Extreme close up cat. 
And the reason for that is because I'm out of sand and it's a little bit of a run to go get, you know, a, a decent amount of sand. So I'm just stealing your windows. Guys, I'll give them back. You're, you're getting a, an upgraded version here. You'll have a new house. It'll be amazing. You'll love it. I promise. So out the back here, we're going to have a little garden. So we're going to go find some rose bushes. I think I've got some in my inventory somewhere because I, I picked them up when I was running around the wilds trying to find different blocks and all the bits and pieces that I would need. Uh, but for the time being, I don't know where they are. So we'll have rose bushes out here. It'll be a nice little garden. Um, that we'll probably waterlog a block beneath as well and just put in that that hoed or tilled effect to some of the blocks as well uh, and that way you know we can put maybe a few carrots here or some beetroot or something like that just to fill it out so it's a nice little backyard area for them uh, because these are these are the rich fellas whoever whichever village village ends up in here is, is going to be well off now i'm a little bit i'm a little bit debating on whether or not i want to use deep slate for the base here so that that may change from oh oh you can't you can't stay like that no 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 much better so, uh, deep plate for the bottom here instead then that will give us a uh, you know a bit more interior exterior and I don't feel like these these people you know that they keep the house clean I feel uh, unlike the walls you know that's fine for it to be lacking on maintenance and that sort of thing but these guys that they, they get the next door neighbor to come over and polish up these things till it shines so we're gonna make some changes there i think i feel like we need to or we need something else maybe there so the other option of course is that if we get some smooth stone instead and put those in place maybe let's just let's just quickly see how that looks see it's almost a bit too clean now mm. Mm. we're gonna stick with the tough for the time being but this is this is under serious review you're on notice tough you, you just don't look fancy enough for these guys or oh, ladies maybe maybe it's a lady villager uh, sorry all you ladies watching But that's all we I have time for just at the moment. So we will be coming back a little bit later and completing this build. Uh, maybe in the same video, maybe in the next video. I'm not sure at the time of recording right now. Uh, I've just got to get back to my J job. So this this build actually took me an hour, including some of the materials to get it. So my lunch break is an hour. This is what I spent doing it. It's roughly an hour to complete. Uh, complete this sort of thing uh, including going and harvesting some of the blocks in the nether uh, and working out what my my color plat palette that I would be working from as well so you can get quite a bit done in an hour um, and you know that this next one will, will represent uh, probably another you know it's probably gonna be 20 minutes here to get this one done and maybe 30 minutes for this one done and so on and so forth it does get easier as you you do more builds and you kind of get into the swing of things but i hope you've enjoyed this build